understand the responsibility that you have. I'm the old daddy. It's my father's word. Probably won't come. I'm probably going to hunt or something. But, but think about that. Who has them? Who hears the whining all the time from the kid? Right? If, if the girls are whining all the time in your house, and you put up with that, you're no doubt a whiner. And you know what happens to that little girl when she grows up? She's a whiner. Which means she turns into a gossip. Which means she becomes a busybody. All those things just spell wreck in room. Because they're never to be satisfied. Because they never were, were, were forced to have their, their faculties and everything put in check. Mother ought to go over and look at it. Shut your mouth! You know? You know what it's like? I have to work plus be a mother plus do all this stuff. You look at me. I demand respect. Well, but she won't. I demand respect, young lady. Well, she ought to know what. No! Heaven's the Murgatroyd, man! They're supposed to know what 40 year olds think like, what 50 years old. Give me a break! They're supposed to know no! What does that mean? It means no! It means shut up! It means put on some clothes! You come out here again, well, tan your eye! Put them clothes on! Your brother don't need to see that junk! We know everything's accepted. You see how this message will fly? I'm either, I'm either a legalist, I'm crazy, I'm radical, I haven't come up to snuff yet, I'm not, I'm not dealing with a full deck of cards. He, he's, being, he's living in the 50s, he thinks it's a leave, leave it beaver age. No, just human nature, man, naturally speaking, without even being saved, tells you what's going to come down. Boys see naked girls, boys have something in their head. Boys touch girls, girls have something in their head. Something rushes through their whole body. How do you know that? The Bible says, boys, men are not supposed to what? Touch what? Women. First Corinthians chapter 7. Why would he, why would guys say that? Then right after he says, better get married than burn. Why would he say that? Because God knows chemistry. Remember? It was chemistry. Okay, what do you do with the chemistry? <laughs> You go naturally with the flow. Then there's a junior. And if you ain't married, the dude's probably going to dump on you. There's no commitment. Now we got little girls that have babies that the grandparents now are rearing. Because people don't want to be old fashioned. It's true. Just I told you before, I said, Bible rules are rules, right? One girl, one boy for life forever. That's the perfect world, all right? If it don't happen because of what, 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 whatever, you're not going to hell if you're saved. God's going to bless you. You want to serve him. He's going to allow you to serve him. Gonna... But don't ever deviate from the rule and make excuses for your lack. Just because I messed up my stake of life for 30-something years on drugs and alcohol and stuff, don't mean it's right. Because from that, I'm reaping everything. So I always preach the rule. We know there's exceptions to the rule. We do not preach exceptions. Our kids shouldn't be given the exceptions. They should know the rule. It is about saying no. It ain't about giving condoms and everything and giving your girl that. Now, they, now she knows at 17 she can get a day after pill. What's that promoting? They should have discipline and character in them to be able to tell their body no and not put themselves in a compromising position. And I'm for that. You don't tell an alcoholic to go to a bar for a Coke. You ought to have no sense not to go there for a Coke. You're responsible for the next generation.
Your children expect certain things from you. They can never get it from dad. I'm telling you, you're rocking the cradle. You're so needed. Think about it. You're needed. You are worth your weight in gold, precious stones above rubies. You are important to God. You are recognized by God in his word. You are honored. You need to see this. you got to see this. It's not about giving up and giving the press. It's about growing in the Lord. You do the things you can do. You can't change everything at once. You hear me preaching all this stuff and some standards and some things. Like, you can't change everything at once. But you don't put it all off. You say, God, I need victory here. And the, when the messages come, the word of God come to you and you notice something, don't overlook it. Think about what that will lead to. Always think about what that will lead to. What will happen when they're 17? Did I prepare her enough for this? Did I tell her the reason she's to act this way and have purport and protocol and stuff like that? There's a reason for this. It's not because we're mean. Because if you do this, this, and this, then in the future, you will have saved yourself this, 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 and this. Young girls that are growing up that see this, they'll have something to work with. And my goodness, all you got to do is watch the tabloids. Watch extra, extra. You all watch Hollywood, everything going on. You're just all married again, all divorced, you know. Kids, suicide, uh, drugs, uh, you know. There's the heroes. There's their heroes. Every rock and roll, every rock and roll thing is, is pushing sex. Then little girls grow up, they say, well, that's how you do it. You get half naked, you jump around like a, a, an African a, a unsaved a heathen. Yeah. And wiggle it, entice the boys, and you're somebody. That's no respect for you. You got no respect. Using your body like that. You have no respect for your body. You're trying to get attention and affection in the wrong ways. Thank your God for being born and having an opportunity to be born again and serve Him. I'll close with this poem. Mother, if I were your son, you know what I'd do? I would thank my God for a mother like you who did her best to guide me right on sunny days and in stormy nights. And if I were your daughter, I'm sure I could say that you tried to help me in every way and have gone that extra mile to prove to me that you are the best mother that could possibly be. And if I were your baby, I would look above and humbly say thanks for mother's love that stood the test through the heat and the cold. I know mother's heart must be made of gold. And if such a mother were to be my wife, she would be the most precious thing in my life. To know that God had given me a mother and wife such as thee. I can remember talking to my mother. She was a 50s baby. Well, she was a 50s. I was a 50 baby. And uh, she had uh, me out of wedlock. And I never knew my daddy. And during that time, it was really bad. Uh, they had abortion back then, too. But a lot of them did die because of that back street stuff. But my, my mother had a problem with affection, and, and uh, she would put her affection in the wrong places. And so I was raised, but you know what? She loved me. She tried to protect me, even though she was like that. I can remember her taking me out. I can remember her dressing me up, making me listen to classical music. Not making me, because when you're little, 